Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Split Screen Gaming Podcast, the occasionally weekly podcast where three lifelong friends correspond about video games from the comfort of each other's homes. This is distracting right now because Chad is dancing with a weird, giggly smile. They don't know that. So anyway, Chad is with me. I'm hey, Chad Michael Innes, y'all. We have an exciting episode. We're going to talk about what Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft have to do in 2018. It's not necessarily like predictions, but like kind of what we think. It's like legally is, is... what they're obligated to do by law, thanks to the Supreme Court. <laughs> That's true. If they don't like, release new Xbox this year, also legally get by sued. law and Supreme Court are very redundant. <laughs> um, and then we're going to talk about the news, of course, what we've been playing. So pretty. Pretty typical podcast horse. It's gonna be exciting. Have you ever played a game about a horse? About a horse? Mm-hmm. I think there is there a horse simulator game. I don't like a horse. I know there's goat simulator. simulator. That and that is an accurate representation of what it's like to be a goat. That's exactly right. It's. I was just thinking. You so said some. You said the word of course, and then I said a horse is a, in my head. I said a horse is a horse. Of course, of course, of course. Unless that horse is Mister Ed, and then it's a fucking dead horse. Some, you know, that old adage. <laughs> Mr. Ed's dead. Oh, yeah. I, and then I, I, I thought to myself, I wonder My if I've ever played do... a game with a horse in it. And I was like, oh, no, definitely I've played, like, Zelda. Yeah. And then I was like, a lot Wait of a games with horses in it. But have you ever been a horse in a game? That sounds like a great top five list. Top five games with, uh, that include horses. We already did birds, and that was a hit. That's right. We did do <laughs> birds. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Um, that oh, was our man. best episode. Let's talk about birds. Let's talk birds about the birds. Word. A lot of people like Eric Perez came up and told me, man, I really loved your BuzzFeed episode, your list episode. <laughs> it's because we talked about birds. Birds, birds, birds. Chad, speaking of birds, what games have you been playing this week? How do you know I've been playing games with the birds? I didn't say that. I'm just saying speaking of birds, which is a great segue into what games we've been playing this week. I played a little bit of Earthbound. And by that, birds. I mean enough to figure out where Actually, the fuck I was. I know, but I've only fought. I did not fight a crow this time when I when I played. I did find a butterfly, though. How did you not fight a crow? They're, like, everywhere in the beginning of the game. Because I told you I spent 30 minutes just trying to figure out what the fuck I was doing when I left that game. Oh, that's right. And that's you all I played. Picked, picked up where you left off. Yeah, so I was um, in the town well, of Let's not talk about Earthbound, because we'll talk know, about that. I know. I'm about. just saying that's what I played. And is I think maybe that's all I played this week. It's, it's going to be a long game. This is our longest game for a uh, I also only played it for half an hour. And, but I, I decided I'm going to play it on 3DS because I, I, it's going to be like 30 hours. Mm-hmm. And I, I won't have 30 hours to spend at home. So I've got to play it everywhere I can on the bus. In, Chad has work. a very busy life. I, you know, I'm the king of Wales. They that, have that's that. the thing. They have in the Chicago, Wales. they have lots of whales that you're the king of. Whales, like I'm Welsh. Oh, okay. You I was stupid. <laughs> I thought you meant like whale. We were talking about animals. I was confused. No, okay. everyone knows the king of Wales, the animal, obviously has nothing to do because all they do is eat and shit in the sea. They don't have a government. I've never thought about fishes shitting before. A whale is not a fish. But you know what I mean? Like things. Do that you know what the- a fish shit looks like? No, I don't. I'm, it's like I'm very a, it's curious. like string. It's string coming out of the back of their butts. I want to see that. My it's sister had a YouTube of fish pooping. That's got to be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, oh, you're the guys uh, like who run Discovery Channel and like do all the shooting for them. Have like guys, I got more footage of the fish pooping. We can't put it in there, but don't worry, I got the footage <laughs> for you. I did. Totally a thing. I did play something else. I booted up my Xbox and Ooh. I dove into Rise, Son of Rome. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, I played it for... It's not a bad uh, game. It's just nothing special. I, don't I played it for like an hour, which is apparently like 20% of that game. Yeah, it's short. That and was a launch game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a launch game. I think game. so, yeah. And it's, it is absolutely... Everything about it is just... It's a launch game. That's all it is. Yeah. It's more of like spectacle and than it is uh, actual gameplay and, and How are the graphics? Are the graphics amazing? Were the graphics awesome? I mean, f- you show I, off for, the power of the Xbox One in 2013? Four years ago? Yeah. It was great. <laughs> and they had some fun gameplay mechanics, like the the way you fight and things like that, but nothing special. I actually booted it up because something in my brain thought that that game was compatible with Philips Hue lights <laughs> and that you could have them kind of interacting. And then... After I was like, God damn it, how do I turn this on? I looked this, uh, the options, everything, couldn't find it. And then I went online and did some searching and couldn't find it. And I was like, what the fuck? So I went to like Philips Hue and they're like, oh, these are games that work with Hue. And it was an Xbox game called Chariot. 
which is a dumb looking fucking 2D piece of shit. It sounds mobile terrible. Port. It sounds awful. But you know, Rise, Set in Rome, started with? Chariot. We're gonna, we're gonna launch Philips Hue integration in a big way. Let's take a mobile game and port it to a console. It's gonna be huge. Well, that's been that's been out for years. But CES is this week. Yeah. And there's some possibly fun stuff coming this week. I'll, in my news stories, I've got some Philips Hue stuff. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that. Yeah, I but think that's all that... I played. Rise and Earthbound. Duh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you go. Yeah, see, you I've go. been playing go. Earthbound 2, but I'm not going to talk about it. We, it's not no, the end Earthbound 2 is not out right now in the U.S. It's technically Earthbound 2. Earthbound is Earthbound 2. No, like, Earthbound it's, 2 it's, would be Mother 3, which is not released in the U.S. But what I'm US. saying is that Earthbound is already I know sequel. what you're saying, but I'm saying you're wrong. I Earthbound 1 is Mother 2, therefore Earthbound 2 would be Mother 3. Or mm. 4, if you go by it's that. It's kind of like Mother how like, Red Dead Redemption is Earthbound is... 1 and a half. Red Dead Redemption is the second in the Red Dead series, but Red Dead Redemption 2 is the third in the series. No. Kind of like that. It's not like that at all. Okay, you're right. I'm wrong. I don't know what I'm talking about. Actually, no, you're, not, you're right. It is exactly like that. Because <laughs> you, you, I thought you were being sarcastic. <laughs> Did you really <laughs> not get it? <laughs> because Red Red Redemption 2 is the third. Yes, the first one's Therefore, Red Therefore, Earthbound Revolver. 2 is the third. Mother 3. Mm-hmm. See? See? Ah. Do they call it... Let's say they released that game. Do they call it Earth Mother 3? Like, yes, it's a sequel to Earthbound. It's called Mother 3. I don't know. Like, we'll never know because it's never coming. I think it's going to come this year. I think they'll do um, – when they launch the virtual console, they'll release it. Well. I That's what I'm thinking, at least. I the, was going to make a prediction The game has it, never been translated officially to English, so. I thought they had a translation, but they're just not doing anything with it. There's an like unofficial – Like Star Fox 2, they have it, but – No, there's oh, an it's unofficial, unofficial okay. like, thing you can download for emulation and play it in English, but – Nothing from Nintendo. Why does Nintendo just buy that? Like, they all save money by just saying, hey, we'll give you $50,000. Well, I'm sure us they that. could if they were interested in releasing the title. But you uh, know well, Nintendo. Well, Earthbound has become a little bit more popular lately just because it's on the SNES Classic. It was on 3DS, new 3DS. Uh, but anyway. It became really popular with Smash Bros. in 1998. Yeah, when Ness was which a was character, actually a few years like after it came out. A secret so. character that was super overpowered. And they're like, you know what? 20 years from now, we'll still do nothing with this property. <laughs> That's kind of how Nintendo is, though. Like, oh, you guys want F-Zero? Here's Mario Kart again. Yep. Even though I don't want F-Zero, but that's just me. But I played a game that is a sequel, and it is properly numbered. Oh. I started uh, playing oh, Bioshock 2. Yes! I oh. did. I'm um, not that far into it yet, because no. I'm playing mostly Earthbound. <laughs> this isn't the Breath of the Wild conversation yet, Chad. <laughs> Oh, it's the Breath of the Wild. Um, How long it's is good. That game? It's it actually improves a lot of the things that I I don't actually didn't like it, but Bioshock is I, I loved that game. But like I think I talked about this when we talked about Bioshock, yeah, uh, last week, which is that whenever the audio um, like files are talking to you and like the little narrative is happening, yep, I couldn't hear it a lot of the times because the action was louder than the people talking yep so they kind of miss chunks of the story but in this one they kind of mute the not like they kind of fade out the action uh sounds the sound effects and the music and all that sure to make the voice acting more prominent which is nice it's called ducking audio is that what ducking? Called, ducking yep well you are the audiophile of this group here so of uh, the three no. of us you are the audio i don't person. consider myself an audiophile but i do consider myself educated uh, I'm not educated. <laughs> that implies that I'm not educated, which is it's just true. I'm not educated. I'm I did not ass. say that. But you implied it, Chad. It made no. me think I'm not educated. I said that I am educated. That is all were. that came out of my mouth is I am educated. Well, we don't fight on this podcast. You're right. Um. Anyway, so Bioshock 2. Having the ability to shoot your gun and use plasmas at the same time. Oh, my God. Thank God. Why yep. was that not in the first game? Um. It's just small improvements like that make it good. But I'm not deep enough into the game to say, like, oh, like, I don't know how the story is. So far, I'm kind of bleh on the story. I don't really care about it as much as I did initially with Bioshock 1. Yeah. So this one, but, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, Bioshock 2 is a prequel. I don't think so. With, I'm pretty sure it's a prequel. No. No? I got the, I got the I sense that, that Andrew... From? I don't think it is. Uh, because it starts... Um, it is a whole, like, ten years later thing. Does it? Yeah. Also, if it was a prequel, but Rapture wouldn't be destroyed. Is Rapture destroyed in that one? It's been so long since I've played that game. It's destroyed, yeah. It's absolutely destroyed. Uh, wait, no. 
It's been ravaged, but it hasn't been, like, destroyed yet. I don't know. Now you're making me confused. I don't know what game I just played. <laughs> I don't know nothing about it. You're right. It takes place 10 years after the original okay, events of Bioshock. Okay. Don't, now, now who's the educated one? I studied Bioshock. I no, no, just... no, no. Listen, I'm still educated. You're just informed. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, all right. Um, yeah, so I've been playing Earthbound and Bioshock 2. Well, I don't have, like, enough to talk about Bioshock 2 quite yet. No. Because I basically just started playing it. Earthbound's a long game, and I want to get it done quicker. I tend to have binged played most of the games. Binged played. Yes. Binged played. Binged watched. Binged played. I think you only need one of those words to be past tense. Shut up. So, (laughs) like I said. Again, I'm educated. (laughs) And I'm informed. Just not in that specific area right there. Anyway, that's all I got. Bioshock 2. Earthbound. Earthbound 2. No, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> we got some cool news stories. I was thinking that this month might be kind of light on news stories. Yeah. But there's some pretty big news stories that are coming out already. Did you find something I didn't? <laughs> I thought I there were some good stories. I found a lots of lots of nothing, really. Okay. I mean, nothing that's like new console announced or like nothing huge necessarily, but bigger than I thought. Yeah. Okay. Go. I think we should start with the one that you got excited about right before we started okay. recording. So CES is this week, and I guess technically it starts tomorrow, the 9th mm-hmm. through the 12th, I think. But obviously there are so many pre-shits uh, that HTC announces the Vive Pro, which in itself is cool. The Vive Pro, still no release date on this mm-hmm. uh, Vive uh, virtual reality headset, but it increases the resolution for a combined resolution of 2880 by 1600 using dual OLED screens. Yeah, it was 1080p 70, before. Uh, 70p, 1080p per eye, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is a 70%, 78% increase in resolution. So that's going to help out a lot with the screen door effect, which is awesome. Which is my biggest problem with VR. Yep. The, now, I don't something else that that's going to take, pushing that many more pixels, you're going to require a lot more GPU yes. power. Um but what I think I'm actually most excited about is the Vive wireless adapter. That is my biggest complaint about VR. <laughs> yeah, all those cables. I have cables. two biggest complaints about it. It's screen door effect and the wires are ridiculous. It makes it a little cumbersome and not as comfortable as it could be. Yeah. But so the wireless pro- adapter you can do with Pro or the regular Vive. So if you already own the Vive, you can make it wireless. Mm-hmm. Um, it promises low latency and better performance using the 60 gigahertz yeah. wireless band. That's what I'm curious about, too. My light just shut off. That's strange. I know. Yeah, um, I'm looking at you in the dark. <laughs> um, one second. I think what's really cool um, is that hopefully this kind of pushes other manufacturers to pick up the slack there and look at more wireless solutions as well. Right mm-hmm. now, the only release date we have is the wireless adapter will be available in the third quarter of this year. So as we kind of get into fall... No release given for the Vive Pro headset, however. The latency is what I would be concerned with, with a wireless version. Because if there's latency, that immediately means it's a terrible VR experience. Like right. You, you need to have an extremely high frame rate. It needs to be very smooth. Latency can interfere with that. They're using, um, what is it? I have it here. They're using an Intel technology called, I think it's the stupidest name. I don't really know how to pronounce it. It's, I think it's we, Ygig? Yeah, it's Y gig. Is it Y gig? Okay, I'm like, yeah. is it We gig? Y gig? I don't know. It's W I gigabit wireless gig. internet. Okay, it's gigabit Wi Fi. Gotcha. Okay, they could have come up with a better name than that. Oh that's my god! You know, Wi Fi itself is just a stupid name and means nothing. I guess, but we've gotten used to it. I just, I don't know. I like Y gig. <laughs> You'll get used and to Y gig. We'll get used to Y gig. But I like a so Y gig. Is it a dumb like, name or are you like, just ill informed? I'm just ill uh, informed. Y gig in comparison to Wi Fi is kind of like. It's like there was a DVD and, like, another, like, weird thing to be, like, you know, FVD or something like that. And it's, like, one's you obviously sounding better. You are nailing us right better. now. You well, are it sounding just sounds weird. It so It sounds like educated. a weird, like, competitor knockoff <laughs> or something like that. It just sounds stupid. Anyway, so you made a prediction last week in terms of, for, for the year, that Sony or, like, Microsoft, Nintendo aren't going to release any new hardware. Right. And I think people are going to assume that, oh, HTC is releasing this new um, Vive that's pro and even better. We're going to see the same thing with Sony now this year. They'll do a new PSVR. I don't think that's the case because you kind of hit it, uh, the nail on the head there with the power. You need a lot more powerful, powerful right. of the computer to run the Vive Pro. 
So we'll see the next PS, uh, PSVR with like higher resolution, that kind of stuff, when PS5, whatever it's called, comes out. Right. I think so, also one other thing is this HTC Vive Pro, we literally don't even have a year yet. Could not even be this year. Yeah. And, and so that wouldn't be unheard of. CES doesn't necessarily mean it's coming out this year. Right. There so are products that get announced at CES that never even come out. And it's, again, going to be will, premiumly though. priced, yes. whereas PSVR has the advantage there. And PSVR doesn't – like, PlayStation doesn't need to come out first with this. I mean, if you know, remember last year, they were mm-hmm. eight months behind Oculus and HTC Vive. And they outsold them by a ton. Oh, yeah, and a ton. It's, so, I mean, the PSVR is really the only super successful. Unless VR you count, system. like, every Android phone with a cardboard box. Eh. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Google Cardboard? Yeah, yep. that's not – I wouldn't – And I don't that. know if you would call that successful. Yeah, I wouldn't call that successful. That's – anyway, that was lame. Um – but I, I do kind of hope that they do a wireless PSVR. Like, that would be nice. I don't see it happening. But I don't see how that could – how much the process, how much more powerful the processor needs to be to pull off wireless. I don't think it would have to be any more powerful at all. No, as long as – the only thing that requires any kind of power is the, the wireless tr- receiver itself. Mm-hmm. So I would like to see that, but I don't think it's, it's going to happen. It would be cool. No, we'll I think I think we'll see, like, if that happens, it'll launch with a – you're right, PlayStation 5. Yeah. Something more powerful, big jump in quality there. Which is a whole topic for another time, but will the new PSVR come out alongside the new console, or the new console then PSVR update? You're right. I'm curious so, to see that. That's another one for another time. We'll, we'll talk about it later on. But there is an awesome new story. This is one I'm very excited about. Half excited very about. Excited. I'm, I'm actually half excited. It, everything sounds great up until the last part. Oh, good. There's a rumor of a new Zelda game coming out. It's going to be 2D. It's going to be based off Link's Awakening. Not necessarily a remake. Apparently, it's going to be like Samus Returns, where you're like, yeah, it's a remake, but they've changed it up enough that it's not exactly the same sure. game. Um, that sounds awesome. And I can't wait to play that on my Switch. Oh, wait, no, it's coming out for 3DS. Oh, Nintendo just kill it. They just, it was just such just a horrible decision. It. Why did you do that? I know they need to keep supporting the platform because they said they were going to. But yeah. I would, every time, I'm going to get the game regardless because I'm a shill for Nintendo. <laughs> I love Nintendo. But when I'm playing that on a 3DS, I know the whole time I'm going to want that on the Switch. There will be a moment where I'm like, oh, I'm so glad this was on 3DS. That thought will never cross my mind. Yeah. I'll still enjoy playing it. Yeah. But I'm upset about it. And apparently, so there's more details. I really delved into this one. Apparently, it's coming out in the first half of this year. So this what is are not your like sources? Some... Where are these rumors coming from? <laughs> it's going to be Marcus Sellers on, oh. on Twitter. He's, he's, been, he's had some misses, but he's been pretty consistent with, um, with kind of rumors and leaks and stuff like that. But I can't remember if I was reading this one, but um, Nintendo has been reaching out to companies saying, hey, can we get quotes for, like, your, your review quotes for uh, Link Between Worlds? Because I think they want to kind of say, hey, we did this mm. great thing with Link Between Worlds. Here's what people said about it. It was a great experience. Now we're doing it with Link's Awakening. So I think they're kind of r- ramping up because they're going to, excuse me, they're going to talk about this at their Nintendo Direct that hasn't been announced yet, but will happen probably next week. Yeah, really. So, I, I thought we would hear something about that by, like, even today. It's, that would be... Rumors I think are tomorrow's be on the, the 11th, latest, which is tomorrow or three days from now. Yeah, so I'm excited about that. It was supposed to come out last year, this Link's Awakening remake. Yeah, but they want they Breath of the Wild kind of changed things up, and they wanted to kind of pull from some of the things that uh, Breath of the Wild did well, like the open style. Which I'm not sure how that would translate in a 2D Zelda game, like the climbing and all that is kind of what makes it possible for that game to be so open yeah and i can't imagine you come to a wall in a 2d game and just how would how would it look climbing it you know what i mean like yeah you're looking down on it it wouldn't look like you're making any progress until you're suddenly at the top like i don't know it just sounds weird again just to be clear all of this is rumors yeah all this is rumors yeah. so i'm just i'm curious to see what this is what this looks like my interest has been peaked Peaked, P-I-Q-U-E-D. Oh, you're so educated. I, I thought know. it was P-I-K-E-D, because I'm not educated. That's piked? Oh, this, uh, see, this, this is what I mean. I'm not educated. Yep, yep. Uh, what do you got for you, Chad? I'm going to return back to CES as well as PSVR for do one it. last little thing here. One, Sony expects the PSVR library to increase to 280 games in 2018. 
which is, which is almost is, doubling it. Uh, yeah, almost doubling the size of the library, which is awesome. Very excited about that. I'm very just. I'm just so excited to see them supporting it because I was so worried that it was going to go the way of the Vita, uh, even just like move controllers or the Vita oh, okay. things like yeah. that. Uh, that's exciting. Two. Another thing that's come out of CES so far, if you follow Phillips Hue on Instagram, like I do, because you're a nerd, <laughs> in their Instagram so story, <laughs> in their Instagram story, I love light bulbs. They have an arcade cabinet. <laughs> they have an arcade cabinet. No, it's, I follow them to get interesting ideas of how to place my light strips and like show living rooms of people. So I'll go over it. it again. I like light bulbs. Oh my god, I hate you. <laughs> they in their Instagram story two days ago have a picture of an arcade cabinet with some lights, and it says, we are taking gaming to the next level. Hashtag CES 2018. That's a good pun. Next level. I'm so very excited because we've seen that experimental experience, the uh, implementation with the Xbox 360. It has a couple of mobile games that it kind of plays around with, so I would love to see that kind of take some proper integration with all of our good shit. Now that I'm done giving you shit about light bulbs, I also like light bulbs in the Philips Hue. They're very cool. <laughs> and I loved watching a movie and having the light bulbs change based oh, on what yeah. was happening on screen. It You've sounds just really dumb, but it's actually kind of great. If you stared at planet Earth with that going on while you're watching it, it's just like... Oh. <laughs> it's blue. I'm assuming the lights go blue. No. There's lots of oh, the, wildlife. Oh, the show Planet Earth. Yeah, you idiot. Oh. <laughs> I'm thinking you're like watching a... Shot of, like, from space of Earth. That's what that seemed like to me. No, I don't do that. I'm not dumb. <laughs> um, why don't you go... Is there any more CES stuff? Because yeah, I don't have any uh, CES stuff. I don't stories. have any more CES stuff, but since you gave me the opportunity, I'm taking it. No, Two I'm hardware notes. Two hardware notes. Ooh. Something's dying. Something's being resurrected. Xbox Connect is officially dead. Not yeah. only have they stopped making the units, they now officially discontinued the adapter to make it work with your new Xbox One S or X. But why? There's so many great Xbox Connects games that I would like uh, to play. Oh, because no. they said that they are focusing their attention on accessories and peripherals that the gamers have been more uh, requesting more. <laughs> so basically, we want to do things that make us money, unlike this dumbass Connect thing, which we <laughs> thought was awesome, but no one else did. That's what that means. Oh, man. But do you remember... Less than a year ago, because we talked about it on this podcast, Mad Cats went yeah. bankrupt and went out of business less than a year ago, and they are officially back under new management, and they're returning with the same line of products that they had before. <laughs> Just make it. So we went out of business, so let's try it again the same exact way. Yep, so they are returning with uh, the Rat Gaming Mice Strike Keyboards and the Freak Headsets, and they will be showcased at... CES this week. Cool. So Mad Cat is back. If you enjoy the crappy version of whatever controller you're used to using, that's how I always had experience with Mad Cat. Is I would be like, "Oh man, I can't wait to go play this at my friend's house," and they pull out the second controller and it's a piece of trash, and you're like, "Oh." Or we would get a new system at home, and my mom would be like, cool, here's one controller that comes with it, and we'll buy three more. And it's like the glow-in-the-dark ones that are obnoxious as shit, and they're pieces <laughs> of trash. But The buttons don't feel right. That's my experience yeah. with Mad Cats. Well, they've never been known for having quality products. It's not know, really. Man. They made the Rock Band guitars for Rock Band 4, and you saw how well Rock Band 4 did. <laughs> Those were the best controllers. Um, I'm going to do a quick story here, because okay. this is a story that... We basically talk about it all the time, and it's getting kind of old even for me. Is it Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild? It is not Legend of Zelda, Breath of the oh. Wild. Uh, Switch is now the fastest-selling console in the U.S. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I feel like every week there's like, the Nintendo Switch is the fastest-selling console in the Arkansas region. Like, like There's yeah. always some new qualifier they add to it, so they have this story every single week. I have another qualifier when you're at, when you're done. Yeah, there's also – it outsold the Wii U in Japan. Yep. It's officially beat the Wii U lifetime sales in Japan. Yep. It also uh, outpaced uh, the PS2 or something like that in its current time frame in Japan. There's yep. just too many qualifiers. Like compared to the, We get it. Nintendo's yeah, we get selling it. well. Exactly. Um, it, as a matter of fact, actually, when I was looking at news stories um, for, the, uh, for the show, I came across that one. And I scrolled down a little while later, and a few days prior, there was another article saying that the, the Nintendo Switch has now outpaced the whatever it was. And I'm like, wait, is it the same? Oh, no, those are two different articles that came out within a few <laughs> days of yep. each other. This is 
I, I'm a huge Nintendo fan, and I'm getting sick of those stories. We get it. Yep. Anyway, moving on to something different now. Something that is doing very well, has been very successful thus far, and that is the Halo TV show. Oh, God. I actually Did you hear about this? Yep. 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 So um, it's apparently still being worked on. The CEO of uh, Showtime, David Nevins, said that it's still it's actively being worked on. Since... Still in very active development. Yeah, still in very active development. He's seen scripts. He has seen scripts. I wouldn't call that very active when you now have scripts five years after it was announced. Do you want to hear something funny? Yeah, I do. If you if so, the the IGN article also has some context. The show was announced at I think it was E three twenty fourteen. No, twenty thirteen. I think it was twenty fourteen. No, I know article. because they were talking about that when the they were announcing Xbox One. Actually, it was even before E three twenty thirteen. I think it was in that like initial announcement where they talked about all the entertainment stuff and they talked about anything about games and it pissed people off during that event. I think that's when they showed. Or at least they talked about it. I think you're a showed. Anyway, I'm a showed. In, uh, in reports first surfaced back in May 2014 that Showtime was a potential home for the series. Okay, so 2014 is when they shopped around to Showtime. Yeah. First announced by Spielberg in 2013. You're right. So huh. here's the thing. Who's informed now? Uh, hold on. Question? <laughs> so 2013, they announced the series. 2014... Might go to Showtime. 2015, May of 2015, a quote from Showtime CEO David yes. Nevin saying, still in very active development. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, two I years am later, da- two and a half years later, quote from David Showtime Nevin, CEO. PR robot. <laughs> two and a half years later, the same exact quote, still in very active development. I think my other favorite quote from that, from this, from, from today, not from... You know, two years ago. Maybe yeah. he said this two years ago as well. He said it's going to satisfy Halo fans and drama audiences. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking like, like, who's like, oh man, I just watched like the tutors on Showtime. I'm going to love Halo. Like, I don't understand what his connection there is at all. I guess we'll find out when the show comes out, probably turn of the next century. Never, never, um, never, never. Here's my concern. I think it'll come out eventually because it's a really hot property and it'll make the money, so they'll release it. But th- if they're just getting scripts now, if they're just getting scripts, they've been working in the scripts for this long, it's going to be like True Detective, where True Detective Season 1 was amazing because it took the guy forever to write Season 1 and then it was rushed into writing Season 2 and Season 2 sucked. So they're going to spend all this time getting Season 1 really good and then they won't have enough time to do Season 2 the same way because they can't have a decade between seasons. No, it's it's just not going to happen. Even you know just like the happen? Halo movie that was supposed to be a Neil Blomkamp movie that never got made. Which I still would like that movie. I know, right? I would like a Neil Blomkamp anything right now. But, yeah, it's it's not going to happen. Shame. Shame shame, shame. shame, shame, Well, another shame thing that shouldn't happen is Metal Gear Survive. There was some gameplay shown off for this. Did you see the gameplay footage? It was like five minutes I didn't minutes see the so. gameplay footage, but I have heard some good things about it. So I watched the, the game uh, play footage, and I'm kind of mixed on it. Yeah? It looks really cool until it doesn't look cool. <laughs> so yeah. basically, it's a, it's a zombie game, but it uses the stealth mechanics of Metal Gear Solid. And when you see those moments, it's actually pretty cool. It's like you'll have this kind of crowd of zombies, and you're going to find a way to get around them. That part of the gameplay looked really fun, and I would like to play that. And then they start showing off when you start to fight the zombies, and it starts looking like a Dynasty Warriors game or something like that, where like you have this axe and you swing it really hard, and it crashes with a boom, and zombies fly everywhere. And I'm like, what about the stealth stuff that I just saw? Like those two <laughs> things seem to really contrast each other. So I'm I'm very curious what. The consensus will be when it comes out. Because there's some really cool things I saw in that gameplay footage. That's up this some, month, isn't it? Next month. They're next the, month. In if, like 10 days or something like that, they're going to have the beta on January That's 18th. Right. Um, here's the thing, though. It's going to be $40. It's not a full price game. So that could be a good thing or a bad thing. A good thing or a bad thing. And the other thing is that the fans are not re- being very receptive to this. It has tons of down uh, dislikes. I'm sure, on YouTube, yep. 
and people the, the comments are just literally people saying that it's the death of metal gear solid it's over they've ruined it so the fans seem to be upset but i kind of feel like this game is not made for the fans yeah i'm sure those i'm sure the vast majority of those comments are also from people who literally didn't watch the video they're just going to downplay anything yeah. that says metal gear on it oh there was one that literally said i just came to this video to downvote it yep like did you, you should watch it first because maybe you'll actually like it yep but i don't know we'll see it didn't look terrible, but there were just some things that were that seemed out of tone, we'll say. Sure, 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 sure. Give me a story, Chad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I have, like, one just sentence of a story and then another story that is a little more in-depth, so I'll just do both of them. And then I, I have two mine. left as well, yeah. Uh, but, uh, one is that Monster Hunter World, which is coming out next month? Yep. Question mark? Yep, next it's month, coming out yeah. next month for consoles. A PC window has been revealed for fall mm-hmm. 2018. So if you Ooh, like that, great. That's this year. Come to the PC. PC principal. God, I love PC principal on South Park. Then my other story is, this is something that blows my mind. Uh, PlayStation released the top downloaded PSN games of 2017. Let's go through these lists, shall we? Have you seen these? I would- no, I haven't. I didn't even know this was a thing. Go oh, man. It. So Cuphead's every, mo- every one, month right? they usually do um, a it's list of Cuphead. ones for the month. I'm pretty and Cuphead, Cuphead is usually on it for the first like month or two and then Cuphead. drops off. Yeah, Cuphead. PS4 games. No surprise, Call of Duty, World War II. Destiny 2 oh, comes in at number wait, two. That's a, that's a new one. I haven't heard of that one. Is that an indie oh, game? Oh, sorry, W. Wii. That's oh, what you probably now, now yeah. I know what you're talking about now. Okay. Number one, Call of Duty World War II. Number two, Destiny 2. Number three, most downloaded game of 2017 is Friday the 13th, the game. Yeah, I've actually heard the game's really good. Isn't that insane? The concept's actually kind of cool. Do you know what it, how, yeah, it's, yeah, it's seven versus one. One person yeah. is Jason. And... It's kind of like that game Evolve. Yeah, yeah kind of. That this sounds better. What blows my mind though is that this is a 40 dollar game from a developer that hasn't really done much they just have mm-hmm. the license for friday the 13th like that's crazy that that sold more than number four horizon zero dawn or more downloads horizon zero Dawn's P- number four number four for digital downloads in 2017 now that's kind of part of it friday the well, 13th digital. was digital only until yeah. october so P- i'm assuming that horizon zero dawn outsold friday the 13th uh, oh, they probably yes. had a lot numbers of wise, copies. yes, yeah. yes, it outsold Friday the Thirteenth, but that's still good for them, man. Yeah, that's impressive. I've, again, I've heard it's really good, and I want to try it out, but I just there's so many games I have to play. That, yep. Yeah. Four hundred years later, Grand Theft Auto Five is still number five on the list. <laughs> of course, NBA Two K eighteen is number six. Rocket League is number seven. Even yeah, though they just everyone hit a new milestone too, they got. In the past few weeks, they added 2 million more users. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Wait, I, what's, that's also surprising because everyone on PlayStation got it for free last year. Yeah. Oh, everyone on PlayStation Plus. And actually, that was two years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a great game that I'll never play because I'm terrible at it. We did play it together. We did. I'm saying it's a great game that I will never play, like continue to play it, like oh, go gotcha. back and play it again. Yeah. Minecraft comes I'm, in at number eight. Madden NFL 18 at number 9, and I'm Ghost Recon Minecraft Wildlands at number 10. Low. Well, it's because Friday the 13th is out there. <laughs> All the kiddos have left the Minecraft and are doing the Friday the 13th Jason stuff now. Yeah. Uh, I want to read through, just real quick, read through the PS Vita games. Got a War Collection on PS Vita. Adventure Time, Secret of the Nameless Wait, Kingdom, Got a War Collection, two. is that is that uh, just the PSP versions, or is that actually like 1 and 2? 1 and 2 as well, I think. Okay, that's cool. Um, Jack and Daxter Collection, number three. Minecraft, number four. Persona, Persona 4 Golden, number five. Salt and Sanctuary, then Need for Speed, Most Wanted. Ratchet and Clank Collection. Star Wars Battlefront 2. The old one. Oh, okay, I was about to say, on Vita, yeah. I'm like, on Vita, wait, yep. what? And then, number ten, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. I loved that game. That game was, this was fun. It and was then good. this I one. Game a lot. PSVR games, top 10 PSVR games. This is actually surprising because I think this looks very similar to what it did last year. Number one is Job Simulator. Two is Super Hot VR. Three Super is... Hot VR is amazing. Yes. That's the best VR game, I think. So good. PlayStation VR World is number three. I Expect You to Die is number four. Batman Arkham number VR is number five. Skyrim, number six. Fruit Ninja VR, number seven. 
Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, number eight. Until Dawn Rush of Blood, number nine. And Drive Club VR, number ten. But what's interesting is that probably like, what, two-thirds of that list is stuff that came out at the, at launch or very close to it. Uh, Job Simulator, VR Worlds, I Expect You to Die, Batman, Keep Talking, Nobody Explodes, Rush of Blood, and Drive Club. That's, yes, yeah, seven of those games. Is I Expect You to Die that game where you have the contraption on your hand? Or is that the, the, nope, the that spy one's static. one? That's static I Expect You there. to Die is, yeah, the spy one is like an escape okay. room. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. That, was, that was fun. I like that one. And yeah. that list I'm assuming will probably change more this year considering how many new VR games are coming. Oh, yeah. Out. So. Oh, yeah. Fun times. Fun times. Oh, yeah. I got two stories left. Oh, I got tooth fairies. Um, this is a rumor that basically is a confirmation that it's really happening. Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition. Ooh, Royal McPoyle. <laughs> <laughs> Royal McPoyle is the bird McPoyle on Sunny in Philadelphia that lives in the old man's hat. Oh, yes, that's right. Great, great show. <laughs> it has not been announced, but it was rated by the ESRB, which basically means it was announced because they're not going to rate games that they're not going to sell. So, yep. so that happened. We don't know anything about what's in it, although it's probably going to be... I assume it's the all multiplayer the add-on, the prompted yeah. DLC, all of that shit. Here's Maybe the thing, even though. including the fishing game. This isn't necessarily a new story, just something I noticed. I saw the Final Fantasy XV headline, and I'm like, you know, they released that really cool thing, the Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition. They said it was coming out before the end of the year. It's probably out then, because it's now the new year. Nope. And it's not, but it is out on Android, I guess. Really? Yeah, like I saw like a link to the to it in the Play Store, but I didn't see anything on iOS. Now maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, you're probably wrong. But what happened to that game? It's probably just not ready yet. I want it. And it's also live Android marketing... September 2017. Yeah. But it's not on iOS. And on the website it says available on you know oh, pre-registration what? available in November. <laughs> Episodic release. Oh, first episode free. The remaining nine for individual. I don't know. Yeah, but there's no. I couldn't find any articles on it at all. It's like kind of like a non-news story, I guess. All I see is that on November 9th, from a few places, pre-registration for Android. Yeah, I saw that too, but nothing for, for iOS. And that's what I meant, pre-registration not available. Huh. Interesting. Isn't that strange? Yeah. Even though I watched a trailer again, the trailer says coming to Android and iOS. I mean, you're a trailer, so mm-hmm, there's I am that. A trailer. Uh, I do. I really do hate some of the headlines this one's from the telegraph it says final fantasy 15 pocket edition is the full final fantasy 15 game for mobile devices uh, no it's not it's 10 chapters like 10 episodes of final fantasy 15 it is not but i mean it's full... the whole story it's the whole story but it's not the full final fantasy game yeah i think it is I don't think it is i think it's all the side quests all of the the weapons and the entire story, but it's split up into 10 chapters that you can buy individually. But aren't there more chapters than that available? I mean, in the technically, game? yes, there are 10 chapters or there are like 18 chapters or something like that in the So they're probably itself. bundling some of those up then. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you can purchase them individually. Okay. I got the impression it was like, so like a while ago they released uh, resident evil four for iPhone, like a long time ago. Yeah. And it was quote unquote, the full game. It was just certain like popular segments of the game cut up into 10 episodes. No, this like this chapters. is so, from everything I've heard of okay. Final Fantasy fifteen. It is the full thing, just with those uh, kind of pared down gameplay mechanics and. Well, that's cool then. Yeah. Last story, I think this is an interesting. One is NBA Playgrounds Enhanced Edition. I know you know about this because it was in the group chat. Yep. Unless you didn't see the group chat, so it is. Well, a... I saw it because somebody asked, "What is Enhanced Edition?" Yeah, really, they said, "What is enhanced?" Question mark, and I responded, as a funny asshole that I am, just the word enzite. <laughs> you remember the men- the enzite men's enhancement 
this is Bob. Yeah, no, I Bob got Bob plays golf. He wants a bigger <laughs> penis. He takes Enzite. And they had the song, though. Oh, my gosh. That was, I do remember that now. Okay. I, I knew what you were talking about. That little bit. Yeah, if you ever watch Comedy Central after, like, 9 p.m. on a weeknight, you saw Enzite commercials as a kid. <laughs> That's, like, terrible. Like, Enzite basically said, hey, I think there's a demographic of men with tiny penises that watch Comedy Central after 9 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so anyway, so I was curious, like, what was the deal with this Enhanced Edition? Because it's kind of weird how they did it. They basically said, we are putting this new version of the game out on the store. It is not an update. It's, like, a new version of the game on the store, even though it is really the same exact game. Right. And then it's free if you if you already have owned the game, and it's half off for everybody else. So I was thinking, why did they do it this way? Why not just update it? Because it's online play added. There's 100 new um, players and a revamped rebound system, which I know nothing about because I haven't played this game before. Here's the story. I think this is really strange. So okay. they were kind of uh, hit with a with bad press after it came out because the Switch version was not up to par with the other right. console releases. It didn't have online play. Um, there were, I guess, sort of some performance issues as well. They fixed the performance issues, and then he says, well, I want to patch the game add the online play the same time he wanted to make the file size smaller because they're getting bad publicity for the game being a larger file size than mario kart which is kind of shocking considering mario kart's insanely gorgeous and it's a small file size. yeah but it doesn't have a hundred new characters in it so he wanted to get the file size down nintendo has this really weird thing where they are net that they won't they are unable to Add a patch to a game that makes the size smaller. So they couldn't patch the original version of the game. That's weird. And he was, like, negotiating with them back and forth for, like, weeks trying to figure out if they can get it done. He's like, no, we're, we can't do it. So he's like, okay, well, what if we just release a new version of the game and give it away for free to people who already owned it? It's just it's so bizarre. That is it's weird. So so bizarre. And... I'll come back to that when we talk about 2018 yeah. and what needs to happen in 2018, which I yeah. think should be right now. Let's do it. Okay. Boom. Time code done. Hey, what so, needs to happen with Nintendo in 2018? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to start with Nintendo or do you want to go to other companies? No, first? let's start with 2K18. Because we we're doing yeah. Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, and then 2K18, right? NBA? Yeah, we're going to talk about Okay, well, that's, that's the fourth company that... That's the fourth company that we care passionately about. Right, right, right. So we'll do Nintendo. Um, this isn't the first thing I had listed for them needing to do, for them um, having to do, but I think it'll just we'll just start with it because it ties right into that NBA Playgrounds game. They can't botch the online launch. Nope. They cannot. It has to be rock solid when it comes out. I expect there to be some like initial crashes on like, the first weekend or whatever because it always happens with these launches. Yep. But it can't be worse than what everyone else is already offering. Yep. It has to be on par. And this idea that they can't patch a game to make the file size smaller really makes me highly concerned that that won't happen. I don't know. You know it's going to be bad. I mean, they need it to be good, but you they know need it's it going to be, be trash. Yeah. And everyone's going to forgive them for it because it's the Switch, and it's awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about that, but they can't mess that up. It has to be perfect. So yep. don't botch the online Nintendo service. And it has to be as fully featured. If people are going to be paying for this, it has yeah. to have. Although they said it's only like twenty bucks a year, right? Yeah, it's twenty bucks a year. So it doesn't have to. I don't expect them to have like game play sharing, like bro game broadcasts and things like that. I don't expect right. that kind of stuff. But it needs to have voice chat for starters. Have, like, yep, voice chat. You got to have cloud saves. Yep. And then you got to have your free game a month thing that they've already promised us. Yeah, which they that's all. It, will that's do. all they have to do. Mm -hmm. Are those three things and make them work well. And I think this is why they're delaying it because apparently this isn't official at all. But apparently they delayed it again to fall of 2018. Like internally, they haven't. Um, they're talking about delaying it again to 20. Man, uh, you have little guys on the inside everywhere. I have little. I have little ears all over the place. No, I'm just online way too much. And I think it's because they they know the pressure on this, and I'd rather them delay it until it's great. Until like, all right, it's 2018. We promised me out in 2018. Coming out in January. Shit, it's not good. Uh, oops, <laughs> we'll fix it again in fall. Like, I'm okay with the wait, but they need to do great. Well, it's already been delayed. It was supposed to come out fall last year. That is, that is true. That is true. At least it's free online service for the time being. But anyway, yeah. um, the other thing they need to do, I have two things they have to do. One is they, or number two, I should say, 
keep uh, the steady stream of, of games coming out. So like yep. every month, another you know another game because they did that super well last year. Like, yep. I feel like every game was coming out too was really good as well. Like if maybe any of those wasn't a game. Eighteen Amazon games are are kind of notice mm-hmm. enough for us. I think they've got that in the can. Yeah, and I think that they already are going to have a pretty solid beginning of the year with Yoshi and Kirby already uh, confirmed. I think Animal Crossing is going to be this year. I think they're going to have. Um, so like the Fire Emblem games been confirmed for this year, so there's already a good chunk of games that have been announced, but they need to keep that that stream. Yeah, going. now they just need to get the games people care about. Yeah, exactly. Like Yoshi, Kirby, Fire Emblem. <laughs> yep. No, I, Fire Emblem's going to be good. I'm excited <laughs> about that one. And you're going to get Yoshi, aren't Yoshi? Aren't you? I don't you know. Said? Probably not. Bayonetta. Yeah, Yoshi. I mean, Bayonetta's Yoshi looks fun, but of course, it, if it goes with the way that all the other Yoshi games have since the Super Nintendo, it's going to mm-hmm. be trash. Yeah. The third thing they have to do this year is they have to release the virtual console. Yep. Even if it doesn't come with GameCube games and that gets delayed, it just needs to have NES, Super Nintendo, maybe some Game Boy stuff in there, N64. It needs to have what we've already expected from virtual console on Wii U and 3DS at at the minimum. That needs to happen at this Nintendo Direct. I think they have to talk about this Direct. If they wait until E3 to talk about that, that's yep. already too late. So that Way needs to too late. GameCube they can announce later because we haven't yeah. seen that before. But the fact that I have a wider game selection of Nintendo's uh, a retro library on a 3DS and not on my Switch is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, we're coming up on a year that they've been mm-hmm. with this console. If they don't yeah. have a virtual console, and they, they they promised. They said, yep, virtual console is mm-hmm. part of our strategy. If they don't have anything after a year this console is launched, yeah, then I'm selling it. <laughs> then they're I'm going to sell my stock, and that's going to make your company go to <laughs> shit. So those are the three things I think they need to do. What do you think, Chad? Those are all of my things. Really? Did I say yep. all of them? Yep. Wow. All right. I mean, I think they're pretty obvious things because they're doing so well and everything else. Just keep doing yep. that, basically, is the gist of it. Also, give me two green Joy-Cons. They do have the Splatoon ones coming they out. They have which one a is left pink. green Joy-Con. But I think they're going to sell them separately, which might mean you might be able no. to get a right green no. Joy-Con. No, they are okay. only selling the green and pink together. And this is why you're educated and I'm not. That's exactly right! <laughs> Go for it, Chad. What do you think about Sony? Sony? Sony. What? Here's what Sony needs to do. Sony needs to make that price drop on PSVR permanent. Yeah. It was half off for Black Friday and it was $199, sold like gangbusters. That's got to be – that's their ticket to getting this fully in adoption. And they're going to make bank off of the games – they need mm-hmm. to make that price drop on VR permanent. Um, Especially now that it's been out a few years. Or a wait, year. Two years? Yeah. Uh, no, it's been out almost two years, hasn't it? October 20 sec- 2016. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. Yeah, they've been manufacturing it enough now. They probably have that down. The components yep. are probably cheaper on the inside of it now than they were initially. They can do that. Yep. That's... I agree. Number one, they got to do that. Number two, we'll probably see a price drop on PS4 Pro. 50 yeah, bucks well, off. Isn't it already three fifty, or is that just a sale? No, that was that was a sales during the holidays. It's three ninety nine okay. right now, but with all of the, we'll see this again whenever we talk about Microsoft. But with all of the comparisons of all right, PS four Pro versus Xbox One X, mm-hmm. it can't quite keep up with like sixty frames a second. Or you can do four um, K. Xbox, Xbox 360 X, or Xbox One X. Xbox 360 can do 4K <laughs> and 60 frames per second. Xbox can usually do both at the same time, but they've got to they got to differentiate themselves a little bit more. They've got to come down to yeah. 349. Mm-hmm. Um, and then honestly, one terabyte has to be the standard for every console. At, I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah, at E3 they got to announce. All right, here's Slim. Even if it's, I don't think it's going to be a redesign, but new bundles of the console that one terabyte standard, two Wait, terabytes. Wait, new for console the bundles? Of... Whoa, slow the train down. I there. know, right? <laughs> and stretch goal dream. I would just love to see a really cool, like, well designed, cool controller for a game. Mm-hmm. Like the controller designs have been really shitty, like for Destiny Two and for Star Wars, and I just want a cool looking controller for a game they I like. They do have those trans uh, those uh, transparent controllers. Yeah, but I want cool. I want I want something like f- that celebrates you want, a game. You want like the customization options you can get with a 360 controller. Or oh with a man, Xbox One controller. I'm those gonna get great. an Xbox One controller, but I've been holding off for that special something that's happening with our podcast. So that I can align my new controller oh, with our special something. Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. 
So I'm going to design my own Xbox controller very soon. Spoiler alert. We have important things coming up. Oh, my God. What? What? What do you have to say about Sony? Sony? Oh, so I I have a lot of things that are similar. I just kind of set them a different way. So I just – mine is continue investing in VR, which they've already kind of done by saying we have all these new games coming out. So that's kind of already – they've already done what I wanted them to do is invest heavily in VR. And my reasoning is that if they invest in VR, it makes the PS4 better. If they invest in PS4, it does not make the PSVR better necessarily. Right. So, and here's the thing, they don't have to. They don't have to worry about PS4 at all this year. Yeah, exactly. It's they are winning on sales numbers. They've got hella games coming out this year that are mm-hmm. all exclusive. That front, they can just take a break for now. And I think they we're can also focus their energy on VR. Yeah, I'm, we're also seeing. I think at least I. This is total speculation and conjecture on my part. I think we're now in like one of the final years of this generation, which is a weird yeah. thing to say nowadays. And I think that investing in VR will help the PS5 yeah. a lot as well. Because if that PSVR works with the PS5, then they have this great foundation laid out. It's just going to help them going into the next generation. Yeah. Um, which that's not this year, but it means they have to focus on VR a lot this year. Uh, they need to diversify their gaming shows. <laughs> because last year... Uh, this is for me personally. Last year, um, you mean I like felt their like showcases. Yeah, their showcases. Gotcha. I felt like it was the same showcases thing every single time. Like, oh, here's a new trailer for God of War. It's still God of War. It's just a newer trailer for. Oh, and here's a new trailer for Spider Man. And I'm like, I'm getting little bits of extra information, but did that have to be at two separate like showcases? I think the problem is that we we are spoiled in the fact that we know what most of their studios are doing right now, and we yeah. know about so many of the games. Like, okay, cool. But I think, we don't have like, anything far enough to show off yet, but... Well, I guess what I'm saying is, is like, at E3, like, pretending that these games aren't coming out this year, like this yeah. E3 have a ton of stuff on God of War. Obviously, it's coming up before E3, but just for, you know, uh, sure. hypotheticals. Do a ton of things on God of War. Don't talk about Spider-Man. And then at Paris Week, talk about Spider-Man a lot. And don't yeah. talk about, like, God of War. Like, I don't know. Like, I just felt like I got these tiny glimpses of those games, but nothing that's satisfying enough. I don't know. And for me, that's actually kind of hurt my hype on these games. I don't really care about Spider-Man. I'm sure it's going to be good, but I'm not, like, totally hyped about it because I've gotten tiny little glimpses of it that I'm just – I was never really that impressed by. I'd rather be like, hey, we're going to spend some time with this game and just kind of build the hype stronger for that game because cool. it will last. The hype will last. Anyway, um, they need to deliver on the promise of the past two years of hype. Because they've been hyping a lot of games the past two years. God of War, Days Gone, Spider-Man, and they ha- they're they not out yet. So they need to deliver, and those games need to come out. Yep. We know God of War is coming out this year. We know Detroit's coming out this year. Spider-Man probably is coming out this year, but it's uncertain. That needs to come out this year. Days Gone needs to come out this year. They need to deliver on that hype. Dreams definitely needs to come out this year. <laughs> so I think that's what they have to do, is deliver on the hype for the past two years. Yeah. No, that's I what think I think we'll see it. Yeah, I think we will too, but I think they they can't delay those games. No. Nope. They need to come out. It's time. So that's what I think Sony needs to do. Cool. What do you think Microsoft needs to do? Tell me about <sighs> that Microsoft baby. I have a harder time coming up with things Microsoft needs to do because it's I don't know, like I feel like they're so down that the main thing they need to do is just communicate. <laughs> Just, <laughs> I think it really just comes down to that. Like, just communicate. Like, you had an Xbox One, and you're talking about how amazing Game Pass is. They never talk about Game Pass. They need to yeah. talk about Game Pass because it's a really what you were telling me with like, hey, there are you know these featured games of the month, and if you do them, we'll, you'll get special perks and that kind of thing. Yeah, I want like that tempted that kind of tempted me to get an Xbox almost because like that sounds fun. That's a really cool community building kind of feature they've built into their console that's awesome so they this need month's to keep... challenge you know what this one's challenge is what i looked at i mean it's it's kind of cool the way that they implemented it but also you can just figure it out really quickly they give you a, a riddle mm-hmm. and then you have to figure out what game in the games pass fits that riddle oh that's awesome and then play that game for three hours that's so earn, clever like, that first... Yeah, I mean, that is so I just went on Google and said, what's the riddle? <laughs> <laughs> but that's still insanely clever. But yeah, that's, that's still really, really cool. That, that's a, a feature of their community that they're building. Like, That's really cool. I mean, that's definitely cooler than anything that Sony does with PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Not that PlayStation Plus is bad. That's not to at the detriment of PlayStation Plus. That's just cool. It's a really cool community thing. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool, Chad. It's cool. Cool. Cool, cool, I said cool, 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 a lot. cool, cool. Xbox, cool. The second thing they need to do, this is the only, I only have two, is... They need to just show off these exclusive these 
exclusive games they've been talking about. Like, oh, we had these exclusive games that are coming out for for Xbox. Show them. You have to yeah. because no one thinks any games are coming to Xbox anymore. Basically, it's like multi platform games and Sea of Thieves. Ooh, I'm really excited about that. Yeah, mine. Just... I have one similar that basically they need to they need to get more third party support. Yeah, and they need to for properly build that for exclusive hype. for exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they need to properly build that hype because if you think about the last couple of years, the the games that people are talking about most on this system are Cuphead, mm-hmm. um, Ori in the Blind Forest, the exclusives at least. Ori in the yeah. Blind Forest, Rise of the Tomb Raider when it came out and was exclusive for a year. Like those are the kind of things that get Xbox in the conversation, and those yeah. are honestly the ones that that people are talking about most whenever and they talk about xbox for me PUBG doesn't really count because that seems to me at least to be more of a pc focused game but that's a and huge also, win for them and, a I, and they're win putting a them, lot of marketing but when the it. developer comes out and says yeah we'd like to put it on ps4 but they have standards that doesn't look good <laughs> for microsoft i don't think standards is what he meant i know but like he said well he literally said that um they have um well they uh, just don't have the early access like beta program basically yeah but it is official release now. It is a 1.0 game now. Well, yeah, and it took eight months to get there. Yeah. So and it just came got, out on Xbox like a month ago. It sh- they should have announced something for got PS4. Eight months to get there to 1.0 on console. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I'm, I'm never mind. Um, so yeah, games, third party games. They need that, and of course, first party. Like, if we don't, I don't want a Halo Six. And I think it's the franchise itself is tired. Yeah, I don't care. But we need whatever they're working on next. Like mm-hmm. if they had a if they you know, Uncharted Halo is 6 to Naughty Dog. Xboxes. Like yeah, for Naughty Dog, Uncharted one, two, three, four. That's all exciting. But then Last of Us comes out. And they're like, oh fuck, this amazing studio is working on something new. If we mm-hmm. have finally three, four, three going Halo three, four, five, Reach, blah, 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 and then oh man, something new from the creators of Halo that's piqued my interest. Um, so I thought you were educated. Three four three didn't make Halo. They're not the creators of Halo. No, but three four three is who developed the last four or five games. Bungie created Halo, and then three four three took over, and then Bungie went on to do Destiny. Bungie, I think, worked on the first three games at least. Bungie and created least. Halo. Yes, I think I think three four three's only done four and five, haven't they? I think and Reach and ODST maybe. I think Reach was the last Bungie one. Let's Google it. Yeah, it was because when they were working on Reach, that's when that's when they were starting work on Destiny. They were kind of making those simultaneously. I think. I think Games developed. Think, think. Halo Anniversary, Halo Company Bob Anniversary, Halo Four, Halo Spartan Assault, Halo Master Chief Collection, Spartan Strike, Halo Five Guardians, Halo Wars Two. So they have some games, even if they're not main entries in there. Yeah, but they took over in 2011. Um. Yeah, they, I I want something new from three four three. I feel like, and I I'm not disagreeing with you. I feel like three four three is the Halo studio, and that's like all that they really do. But like you said, Halo's not a draw like it used to be anymore. Neither, neither right. is Gears of War. So they need to. You're right. They need to get that that developer on something else. But I feel like Microsoft. They need narrow, a fo- Last of Us. Gorilla was the kill zone people. Now look at Horizon Zero Dawn. Totally, totally. They they need to take these tired franchises, let them go for a little bit, come back but, to them after they've created something crazy. And I'm agreeing with you. I think you're. I think you have the right idea there. I just don't think that Xbox or Microsoft has the right idea there. I think they're. They, I think they still think Halo is a big draw franchise. Obviously, by their Showtime television show. <laughs> <laughs> like that show's going to come out. People are going to be like, Halo. Oh yeah, that's right. Boom, yeah. boom aliens. All right, so that's cool. what they need to do. Mm-hmm. Also, another one, they have to drop the price of the the Xbox One X. See, I wrote that down, and I'm like, yes, they need to, but they're not it's going to. It's too early to. to do it right now. It's it's that, but also, they are already not making a profit on all those consoles. They don't make a profit on the Xbox One X. And they have I, to, but that they've got to cut their losses there for by e3 e3 they have to come out and say hey by the way we know we're the most powerful console in the world and now we're the same price as our competitor and we can do more they've Mm -hmm. got to cut 100 bucks off 
So that because yeah. every that's the conversation is as we just said before, it's always all right. Do I go the PlayStation Four Pro or the Xbox One X? And people are viewing them, even if it's not necessarily the truth. People are viewing them as kind of the equal on either side, which is I'm like not oh, true, one's more expensive. Not for marketing, get it. it seems that way. Yeah, right. So your lame person walking in the store, or mom and dad buying one for Johnny, they walk in and they see, oh, I could buy the powerful version of the Xbox for a hundred dollars more, or I could buy the powerful version of the PlayStation and save some money. They're gonna go and then just buy more games or something. Yeah, yeah. I think I think there was analyst Michael Pactor said that five hundred dollars for an Xbox One X is too expensive because during Black Friday deals, you could get a PS4 Slim and an Xbox One S for less than an Xbox One X cost. And your two consoles you just bought probably will come with a game each. Because yep. of bundles and stuff like that. Like, it's just too, way too high in price. Especially for... I think Sony could probably get away with that more than Microsoft could because they have a bigger fan base. They have better exclusives. But it's like, oh yeah, let me get an Xbox One X that's super expensive and I'll still really want to play those Sony exclusives that I can't play in here. And there's not any good... But, I mean, if they still have, like, Shadow of War, like, the best place to play this game is on Xbox One X, that'll be a draw for at least for third parties. I don't think people care. And we've talked about the whole power, how important is power in consoles. I don't think it's as important as you'd think it is. Like, there's a reason that the PS4 Slim sells better than the PS4 Pro. Because people would rather play the same game at a cheaper price then spend extra money to play the best version. And the people who are like that... different audiences. And the people who are like that are PC gamers. I don't think they... I mean, there is there is an audience for that pro level. Otherwise, the PlayStation 4 Pro wouldn't exist and wouldn't be selling, and the Xbox One X wouldn't yeah, but it's, exist. Yeah, it's but there, it's there for people like you who are like, I want a 4K gaming you know, experience on my exactly. 4K TV that I just got. It's not the people who are thinking, I want the best possible textures they want the highest possible frame rate those people who obsess over those details will just want to update their graphics card in their pc every once in a while right but if they're if they're going for like hey i want to buy an xbox and i've got a 4k tv i might as well get the 4k version of it mm-hmm. because that is something that's important to me it might not be like yeah. man i need point and click mouse shooting and blah, blah, yeah. blah something like all of that like yeah they're not going to get a pc for that but if like I'm going to get the most powerful version of the Xbox that's mm-hmm. out or the most powerful version of the system because I want to take advantage of that on the yeah. the TV. What, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, and I don't think, you're, I don't think we're really in disagreement on this, no. but I think what, what – no. <laughs> no, no. Whatever you're saying, I'm not getting it. Whatever I'm saying, you're not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> the price point is too high for that person who would say, I just want to have a, a 4K yes. gaming experience. It's just too high for that person. Yes. And so. if it were $100 cheaper – it would sell better. That would be enough of a draw if, if you can say, oh, these consoles are the same price, but mm-hmm. that one plays it at a higher frame rate. Yeah. That would be enough to draw them away. Mm-hmm. Even yeah. just with third-party titles, I think. Or they would, it would give them a fighting chance. Yeah. yeah. That and exclusives. They need exclusives to really sell it. But anyway, yeah. I think that's a good segue into our subscriber interrogative. Segui. Oh, my gosh. So we have a subscriber interrogative. While this is not the exact question this person posed... They didn't really pose a question. I drew something from it. So shout out to <laughs> <laughs> Fezd IRL on Twitter who uh, tweeted us and led to this question, what would it take to convert you to PC gaming? So Holden, what would it take to convert you to PC gaming? So I've thought about this, and I've realized that it is nothing about PCs that makes it compelling. It's about the person who wants to play the games. So you don't want to be a terrible garbage person. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I think like the the compelling thing about PC, like I just said before in our conversation about the Xbox One X, is someone who wants the best graphics, the best possible experience, the most versatility in their in their consoles. And I'm not that gamer. Like I'd want to sit in front of my TV and just play it. Like I don't want to think about building a PC and looking into graphics cards to find out which one's going to work best with my system and setup. I think that's more of like a a type of person will buy that as opposed to a, there's like a feature that would convince me to get a PC. I think the only thing that's compelling to me about PC gaming is that the games tend to be cheaper. Yeah. That is very cool. Yeah, those it's Steam all... sales? Oh, man. Oh, that's awesome. I, I enjoy them when they happen on PlayStation, but they're not the same as a Steam sale. I know that. Yeah. And we talk about $60 but... price points a lot, but on Steam, they're often 50 bucks full price. Duracell, I think even Overwatch is like $40 
for yep. like the full price version of the game regularly. And they charge more for it on consoles because people expect a sixty dollar game on consoles. Um so I don't think there's anything that could convert me to getting a PC. I think I would have to change as opposed to something a PC does that go, makes me go, ooh, I really would like to experience that. Yeah. I, I think I'm in the same boat. I don't think anything can convert me to PC gaming because here are the reasons why I don't enjoy PC gaming. Mm-hmm. One, it's a, it's a space thing. I live yeah. in an apartment in Chicago. I don't have space for a giant desk and a big monitor. And but they have big a picture rig. mode. On on Steam now, or but can, it's not the same. It's not. But the they same. have but they have big picture mode. It's, it's a not big the same. Picture. It's a, you plug it into the into the TV and you use Two, the big picture mode. Kind of going along <laughs> that same thing, not having a, a room for a big desk with all the room for the accessories and shit like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, I could connect a Steam machine to my TV, but then also sitting on a couch with a keyboard in your lap and a mouse like that's yeah. And I know you can kind of get a. Con- I'm a I agree with you there. I know you can get a controller for a PC. You can, but and then I lots feel of like... the controllers I already have already work. But yeah. when you're playing PC games, a lot of times you. I mean, a lot of the things that go on on PC that people are hardcore dedicated to are mm-hmm. competitive things. And if you play competitively with a controller versus mouse and keyboard, you're going to get shit on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that's another reason why I don't have a keyboard support. It's going to come to Xbox. It already is. Isn't it? Okay. I, thought, yeah, I know that yeah. you talked about it. Okay. Um, um, number three, why I don't play number three PC games is because I like the idea of having tiers, like a few options to choose from mm-hmm. without having to worry about having the best thing and so many different th- – I'm not explaining this well. If you think about my – way of playing games where I often am a completionist. I'm like, oh, there's a side quest. Let me go complete the side quest before I do Mm -hmm. the main story quest. That same kind of thing when I'm playing, if I had a PC, I'm like, okay, I've got my gaming rig. It's set to go, top of the line. And then two months later, oh, there's a new graphics card out. It's like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. I want that new graphics card for this game. And then, cool, I got the new graphics card. And then two days later, oh, man, there's a new, uh, better, faster RAM for your computer that will make mm-hmm. this better. I was like, well, shit, now I've got to upgrade that RAM. I like the fact that I can say, with console gaming, right now we have two tiers. One of them is better than the other. There's nothing I have to do. Like, there, If there's another version you that's even better that can get me more, you plug it I into get the, the new TV box. And it works, yeah. I, yep. And I, I, Otherwise, clear, I'm like, constantly going to be buying new tiny things, and I'm just going gonna, gonna to go broke. Yeah. Um, I agree with you in that absolutely. I do think that the PC offers the best gaming experience. Oh, of because, course. Like I, you, I don't think you can argue that. If um, you have the money and you have the setup, that is absolutely yeah. the number one way to play games. But it comes with some, you know, some downsides. Like you mentioned, like the whole graphics card, buying a new graphics card all the time. But what if there's a bug in that game that makes it not work as well with that specific graphics card? Exactly. Like, yeah. That was the thing that happened with Dark Souls Three. Like a friend, uh, Cameron, you know Cameron, um, he. Uh, Every time he would turn the camera and he would see his shield, something about the lighting on the shield would cause the whole game to crash. And you then have to wait for from software to release a patch for that specific thing, which it might not be impacting that many people, so they might not get to that. So it's right. little things like that where, yeah, it undeniably, when you and it does work, it works better. But, but I you know that from software has designed this yeah. game and tested it specifically for... Every mm-hmm. piece of hardware that's in the PlayStation. Exactly. Versus and, the hundreds of options that you have with a PC. And when you – if you kind of look at entertainment, it'd be like saying, oh, I'm going to watch a movie. Oh, but I can't finish this movie because every time my DVD player re- reaches a certain scene, like it just stops the movie. And <laughs> like I wouldn't want that. I want to watch the movie. I want to play my game. I don't want to, to have To be clear, that still does happen with buggy games on console as well. But Yeah, it's but a there's a rarer. higher likelihood it'll get fixed. It's less like, likely to happen in general unless it's No Man's Sky. And <laughs> it's just, it's not something I want to deal with. Yeah. So, and, but again, like it is the best way to game. Like I, it, you can't argue that it is. Yep. It's the most versatile. You can make it your own. Steam also, is awesome. I it's do have best. a history with PC gaming. You know, as a kid, I played, oh, I did not know that. Like, well, as a kid, I played Guild Wars and Diablo mm-hmm. and sacred and uh-huh. all of these things on a PC with my brother. Um, and we did. We would like hook up over the wireless network, and we would play all these mm-hmm. games, things like that. So I'm not a stranger to it, but 
I sure am glad I don't have to cramp my fingers around the WASD keys anymore. Yeah, like, that's one thing too is I hate that idea of using WASD keys. That's just yeah, it's seems not terrible. comfortable to me. Also, but I'm if you're playing on a Mac, so, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah and Mac. also my computer's a Mac, and if I hit Command, like a lot of times you would like hit Option in mm-hmm. in Guild Wars to show enemies' names or health bars or things like that. So I'd be holding Option while I'm pressing W A S and D. Sometimes <laughs> my thumb would accidentally hit Command and W, and that just closes the game. It's like, well, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. That is one actually good thing about PC that no other console can really boast about, and that is limitless backwards compatibility. Yes. That is such an awesome feature. It's so yep. great. It's just, it's just inherent. It's not like they designed it. It's just inherent. It's, that's one of that's my favorite things so that Microsoft great. is trying to do on console, too. Yeah, and it's smart to do that because, um, gee, I heard that the first Diablo game is is pretty cool. I don't have to like go buy the old vintage console if I want to play that game, I just buy the game and I play it where it's like, I really want to go back and play like advance wars and some of these old, like game boy advance games I'd play, but I have to buy a game boy advance first. And then I have to like find the game PC. It's just, yep. it's all digital. It's all online. You can just get it. Yep. That's what gaming should be. I really think that's how it should be. I think consoles is, is going to kind of hurt, um, the history of games and being able to look back like skyward sword I'll never be able to experience that unless I have a Wii and use those motion controls. It's not like you could put that on a Wii U or, you know, maybe it will come to the Switch and they'll tailor and all that, but it might not. And then that game is now lost forever. Yep. To history. So. You're lost. So thanks, uh, thanks Fezzed IRL for uh, leading us to that discussion. That was a good little discussion. Do you think it's uh, Phil Fish? It is Fez, right? Is it Fez? It's F E H Z D I R L. Fez. Wait, maybe like Phil Fish is talking to us. That'd be awesome. I R L, and he's in real life. Oh, okay. That changes everything then. Yeah. So that is the show for today. Next week, we're going to be talking about the Nintendo Direct that will be announced this week and happen before our next podcast. And if it isn't, we're going to talk about how Nintendo is doomed and they're going to be a huge failure. You're doomed. You're doomed. You're doomed. Do- have you ever seen Cannibal the Musical? No. That's your homework. That's my homework. <laughs> See, Ken, it's from I'm the Greatest South Park. I'm going to get confused and I'll end up like, watching Cannibal Holocaust instead and be like, why did Chad <laughs> want me to watch this? <laughs> Cannibal the Musical from Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Oh, okay. And so it's, it's very different than Cannibal Holocaust then. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it's hysterical. All right, everybody. We'll see you next week. Hugs and kisses. Hearts and charts.